Okay, so again, shed some light on the subject. Come on, computer. Come on. Okay. Um, again, you know, what do you think your horse would rather have underneath his foot? There. You think you'd like to have this nice, round, cushiony, collateral groove? Or do you think you'd like to have some that look kind of like that? Huh? So, you know, uh, some people have been teaching you shouldn't trim the bars, that they'll just take care of themselves. Well, uh, I don't see how that's mechanically possible. You know, it's just not mechanically possible. And you have to look at these feet just like you'd look at your house or a building. That, that they're based on uh, the structural laws of engineering um, and that has to apply so you know again because the heel area and here did not get trimmed on the horse uh, this on this horse I've got the other piece here somewhere it just grew up like this like that and it lifted this internal foot up like that. Here, we'll just kind of set that in there. That's the way that foot was setting in that hoof capsule. Just like that. Okay, um, now there's some things I want you to think about. Okay, and that is that that the reason I'm doing this is simply because I'm a horse owner just like all of you I love my horse and uh, he had some things going wrong with his feet and I wondered why and so I started trim my farrier didn't seem to be able to answer the questions or give me any answers <coughs> excuse me and so I started searching for for the answers myself I thought I found them in barefoot trimming and I didn't um, in fact, I just had more and more problems. Okay, now now here's the thing that you got to know. These people that uh, a lot of these people that that teach barefoot trimming, they've had a lot of successes. That's for sure. Okay, and and a lot of the barefoot trimming principles have helped um, a lot of horses. Um, some of the feet have been so horrendously bad that anything would have helped. Though you have to remember that. Another thing you have to remember is that that people often only post successes. You know, they're not posting and they're not talking about all the failures. And let me tell you what, if you go out there and you search out horse forums and things like that where people are trimming their horses and doing barefoot trimming and taking clinics and buying buku books and stuff like that, you're going to find a lot of people who haven't found any answers and they've spent a lot of money um, you know taking clinics and buying books and whatnot um, and they still haven't got their horses feet uh, and many times their horses feet have gotten worse okay um, and one of the reasons is because um, there's no system of mapping um, uh, there is with a few different trimmers like Gene Ovenick has a has a pretty good system of mapping you know in natural balance trimming and uh, natural balance shoeing and stuff like that you know they have a pretty good system as far as they understand that you should bring back that toe and you can understand why by looking at this foot right okay you can imagine if this toe <clears throat> got real long and stretch forward out here that it's going to stretch stretch the wall out and that's what happens in a lot of cases you get a real big flare coming out here so you know that's one of the things they at least understand a, they at least have a system for bringing back that toe so that toe doesn't get excessively stretched forward <coughs> yeah I better take some water So there, and so that's, you know, yeah, I found that this system was kind of flawed. 
for instance, if the whole foot is stretched forward and you're using the three basic ways to find uh, the center of the foot, you're going to be way off because this whole foot can be, this, the frog can stretch clear to the tip of the coffin bone. Okay, if this, say this was a real flared foot, it can be just like that. Okay, now I could, because it stretches, because the frog corium stretches and the frog is growing clear down to the tip here, you know, and the whole foot is stretched forward, then everything isn't where it's supposed to be when you do the three major ways. Now you need to watch that video on YouTube. <clears throat> and I'm not talking that method down at all. In fact, I'm very grateful for it. I just uh, thank the world of Gene Ovenick and the research and the work he's done to help the horse. But what I'm saying is that the method is flawed if you have what's called a run forward foot. And that's where the whole hoof capsule has basically the toe, everything, the heels have run forward, the toe is stretched forward, because then you're not mapping true to the foot, because in truth the whole foot has run forward like this. So you would be bringing your toe back to here when you should be bringing it clear back to here. That's where its natural spot would be. See, if we, <clears throat> it's kind of kind of hard, let's say, Okay, now this will flatten out when the toe runs forward. This right here will flatten out like that. But what happens is the foot winds up sitting in the hoof capsule clear back here. And I've seen, uh, and even on my horse, the, the frog was stretched clear up to the tip of the toe. So... Um, when it, so you've got to have a system to find out where is the internal foot, really, you know, and the hoof does so many different things that sometimes it's hard to tell. But anyway, that's why I um, started mapping the foot um, to try and find the internal foot rather than just going by the hoof capsule itself. And I found the best way to do that was to find the center of the foot here and then draw a line. My, my lines are kind of screwed up on this one, but the principle holds true to what I'm teaching in these videos of trimming to the anatomy of the foot, except for one thing that I have a problem with, and that is that these measurements are kind of a one-size-fits-all, and I know that it just can't be that way. Okay, I know that in these measurements that they're going to have to change Okay, it might have worked for Gene Ovenick. It might work for natural balance trimming, but this is corrective trimming in order to get the whole foot to grow back to the way it's supposed to. So I know, and this is something I'm working on, is that um, these measurements have to change for the size of the horse's true foot. So <clears throat> that is, is one thing I'm working on. And I found that the measurements used... Um, for a non-distorted hoof capsule, really, uh, that I'm using in the other videos, that those measurements would be for like a double eye foot, which is a pretty small foot, okay? Um, and there are some things wrong, I think, <clears throat> with the measurements that are giving, given in the natural balance uh, mapping and trimming video which I'll discuss in the next segment and that's why I am going to change my measurements and develop a system that maps for whatever size foot your horse has and is not a one-size-fits-all. Fit, 